ticket. They are here and they are back to win it all. But Mega Warriors might be considered uh, an upstart, a bit of an underdog. It's a team that's new to Clash Worlds in 2021, having emerged earlier in the year to represent Brazil uh, in a Clash of Clans esports competition. So they've been busy in community tournaments since then. The first attacker that we'll see from them is going to be Sidera, who has a 99.7% average destruction uh, from seven attacks. He pulled off three triples or uh, triples in six of them uh, and came very close on the seventh. So maybe one of the strongest attackers that we have all uh, day to day. Itzu. Yeah, and let's see if those players can now deliver. He's so far not. Wait a second. There is the poison now. I was just waiting for that one just so his queen can push even further. And right now he has the lock launcher selected. One of the most powerful combinations right now is this queen charge with the lock launcher together. Invisibility spell for the Royal Champion. Not really sure why he used the Royal Champion that early. Maybe creating pathing might be a good option and getting that scatter shot down. Question is, is he going to get everything he wants to get? Because right now we have an epic battle between of the King and the defending Royal Champion. Who is going to win that, Woody? Good question. <laughs> attacking champion goes, or the attacking king goes down though. Defending king and the royal champion will stand firm. Now that might not wind up being too big of a problem if we get those dragon riders uh, on task. And actually it might wind up not hurting him very much at all if it pulls the dragon riders closer to the defending structures. We'll see how that all shakes out as to see. They uh, sends in his forces from the bottom corner there. You see those dragons, uh, dragon riders getting support from the Grand Warden as the balloons are going to knock down some key structures in the mid there. Air Sweeper not focused on these enemy troops uh, will cause no problems at all, but look at that. Ice Golem popping through virtually everything in the base. Great prediction there from Sidea oh. and excellent passing as well. But the bombs, Itsu! The bombs and the Queen is not going for that tunnel. Oh no, this could turn out being so bad. The Queen is going for that Archer Tower and now she's coming back. Can you summon? Like there is no spells left. Those Dragon Riders, they have to summon get the tunnel, but this is getting protected. As it's getting repaired up, we can see the reaction up there in the face cam. He is knowing that he's in trouble. There is the Black Mine and this attack was so nicely baited by Space Station. Those red bombs, I was talking about this earlier in the match that people really like, or a pair really like to do that. And take a look at that. Perfect placement of those traps is getting Space Station with an incredible star in this matchup. A one star and like on this level, like there was nothing which the attacker did wrong. Like it's obviously you could say, oh, that was a bad attack. Not by any means. It was just like incredible base building on the Space Station side, getting those traps in, making sure those healers were gone, those Dragon Riders. Most of the time there's an early warden ability. And with this, the back and black mines really carried this base, and this was an impressive showing of the base bidding team of Space Station, Woody. Gareticus is a fisher, man, and this base baited the perfect hit from Cidea. This could not have gone better for a first defense by Space Station, knocking out not just a three-star attempt, but the second star and from the opponent with the highest hit rate on that squad, this is beyond a dream for Space Station to start out uh, with such an impressive defensive pickup. Will Gereticus follow up now with this massive seven Dragon Rider army for a triple uh, to end this show virtually before it even gets started? Yeah, that's, I mean, at the same time, this is now like a huge challenge as well to the mental game kind of like of Mega Warriors because it is not easy, like mindset wise, to reset after such a one star, but let's see. Maybe they can somehow do it either way. Gareticus now is on offense and he wants to dive into this base with his seven Dragon Riders. All of like three of the four heroes already placed down early and he is having a huge push plan, trying to take down Defending Queen and the Royal Champion. Key defenses, like key defensive tools, which you can take down and are important to take down if you want to go in with seven Dragon Riders. Is there, is there even enough damage in the base to take down seven Dragon Riders? Like, that, that's going to be crazy. But the question still remains, what is he going to do with that Town Hall? This is a big, heavy hero commitment early on. The Town Hall must be uh, targeted by the Dragon Riders themselves because it has not been activated. Royal Champion will dodge it. Gereticus had last time in May 
uh, attacked last as the final hitter in this lineup. So the fact that he's going first now kind of signals that he's getting a new role in this lineup. He also did not manage to get a triple out of the four attacks that he did uh, in May. And so he's trying uh, to kind of salvage and rebuild from a new position now as the uh, starting hitter for Space Station uh, to get a good war started right off the bat. Protection for that Dragon Rider keeps it safe from the Seeking Air Mine. And with a little bit of spread Ooh. here, he is going to have to go far and deep to reach that Town Hall. This is an extremely gutsy play from Goretta Kasitsu. Yeah, but he's saving the Slammer. Like right now, he's just like waiting for, like, for the sound to be activated, which now is the case. And now he's kind of like waiting what exactly is about to happen. Now the Slammer is coming in from this top left side to take down the Town Hall. And there are no Black Man. So the Slammer now is taking down the Town Hall pretty easily. But so far, the Dragon Riders have to keep pushing through. There were a lot of red bombs in the core, which means the majority of those air traps will be taken down. The Town Hall now has been taken down as well by the Slammer. And Moody, this is looking so good. Only time can I save the space. But, well, there's the best air defense still left standing, which is the king. He can cause so many time fails. And this time <laughs> is ticking. 25 seconds left. Can the Dragon Riders finish this base off is the question. They're working their magic as fast as they can, but you are right. Even spread out, they are going to have to go quickly to finish everything off. The Barbarian King platform there sitting right next to him uh, should be an easy target for them. They got a path up to the clan castle. Five seconds left. Oh. Pump your fist. Hold oh. your breath. He's got it. Three stars for Space Station as Goreticus gets his first one of the year in a monthly qualifier. Congratulations to him. Uh, and this squad now emerging as a strong force uh, contending for a top placement. Yeah, and like, this is the perfect shot for Space Station because like, not only they started with a three star, which is already like the optimal thing, but at the same time, time they defended on a one star, which is making this lead even more incredible. It's after one attack, or one attack, already a two star lead. That's not that common. So let's see if... The if we have Mega Warriors somehow getting back in this one, we have 11 Inferno Dragons. That's a lot of Inferno Dragons. Typically, we see like maybe nine or something, but 11 Inferno Dragons onto this base, two Lightnings, a healer as well to cover them in the core. Whew, let's see, they need, they need that three star to somehow get this match maybe back around. Well, he's starting a little slow here. Even with Rocket Loons, he's going to have to uh, back it up with big firepower spread out in the top right side. Oh my god, that is a huge <laughs> line of offense from these Inferno Dragons, burning that poor Elixir Collector to uh, a nothingness, just melting straight through. He's kind of got two clumps of these Inferno Dragons now pathing uh, into various compartments in the top and the top right. Focusing on to enemy heroes now as he gets the CC pull out with an aggressive poison spell placement. Uh, grabs those super minions, uh, but maybe not necessarily everything up there. Pops the Eternal Tome early as well, and that Dragon Rider on the Town Hall is unfortunately going to go down to the poison spell as it explodes uh, from that first and second star claim. Eagle Artillery on the backside is also still causing problems from Lucas, but maybe he's able to power through it after all. It's not getting a lot of value in terms of splash damage because there hasn't been a whole lot of clumping of these troops. He burns through the Inferno Tower in the center and things are really starting to look up to having a whole lot left. He has still got both of those hero abilities and is trying his best to keep them up and at them. It's yeah, but I don't think it's going to be easy. The back end king could cause some problems. And I feel like this time, wait a second, that queen is actually MVP going for a wall, which is normally not what you want to see. But on this one, going for the wall, going for the eagle is clutch. Question though is, can this royal champion get to the single Inferno Tower? The single Inferno Tower is highlighted. We can see the HP. There is a lot of HP still on. Can the Royal Champ do it? There's the Royal Champ ability now. Royal Champ has to push through. The Queen ability can take down the Defending King. So this is still possible. But at the same time, Woody, the time, there's only one minion on this right side. One lonely minion. Can this one minion somehow save this attack with the Queen together? The Royal Champion dived in a little bit too fast and actually wound up pulling the enemy King before the Archer Queen could get a chance to engage. That's kind of bad news for Lucas because he needs every ounce of damage that he can get in order to be able to drop 
uh, the full pressure on this base. There's lots of archers on this outer edge, but they have to crack through so many walls. And as you've mentioned, that minion on the right side is just not going to be enough to finish off all that cleanup. It's now going to come down to a march uh, for the end of this base. And I just don't think he can get there in time. 10 seconds left for a Lucas. Cross your fingers, but I don't think the Mega Warriors are going to be rewarded this time around. No, and they needed that so bad. Like, they started with a one star and would have needed a three star so bad in this one. But it's going to be the time fail, actually. A 98% two star is not what they were looking for. And this is a really, really hard situation to be in. Because, like we just saw, the, the perfect start of Space Station, depending on what they're doing next. If they're going with the next three star, I feel like, sadly, this match is over. I feel like a super close match like the first one would have been obviously like cooler to watch but at the same time let's see if they can somehow turn this around depending on the next attack what space station is doing either way just enjoying those amazing attacks and what those pros can bring to the table we have agent now coming in okay bring the queen charge hybrid baby one war break going to charge their town hall and would you take a look at that there's some one there's not two there's five builder huts behind their town hall and we're protecting that one you dodge those spring traps and you are golden with a hybrid army. Agent 33 knows that he has got to get a good read uh, on where those traps are at though, or else uh, this ground-based offensive is gonna melt uh, quickly. He's trying to crack through with wall breakers now, making his way to the top left compartment. Should have an easy time on that town hall and is gonna be able to finish off that air defense uh, ought to be before the enemy uh, is able to lock onto those healers. Agent gets the pop early on this town hall instead of locking uh, those defenses, though, and that's going to be a little bit of a problem for him. Has to drop that freeze to keep him safe as long as he can. Uh, but even with that, I think he might have lost one healer. Lots of archers and headhunters streaming out from that CC, though, Itsu. Yeah, but with a really nice and early poison, you should be able to deal with that. Like, this clan castle is really good against those dragon type of attacks because they can sometimes snipe the warden out of the like everything like the dragons are not quick enough to take them down but either way this one is a hybrid attack and he is starting really strong into this bottom compartment scatter shot multi inferno tower and everything on the menu in the beginning wait a second there's a couple of hawk riders flying do we see more spring traps like this or was this just like a couple of hawks in the beginning that's the big question but so far this attack and this push is looking incredibly strong Woody. This is a big turnaround from Agent 33's typical play style of using dragons. Instead, this time around, he's gone all on the ground and has kept them safe throughout. Great heal spell placements and protection from the Grand Warden is going to keep them safe despite a massive uh, chunk of splash damage being thrown against them. They are perfectly spread uh, to maximize damage onto enemy defensive structures. And even with a Tesla farm popping up over in the right side corner, that's not going to be enough to stop these fine fellows. Their finishing moves are deadly, and Agent 33 will get another triple for Space Station Gaming. Drop the hammer because this is a three star with hogs and miners yeah really really nice it's done the queen charge for the town hall really really good pathing on that queen getting that town hall down quickly and then this pathing around the bottom side and especially i feel like this one like the spare placement in the core was clutched on this one being able to freeze up the multi front tower so the couple of miners and hawk riders would split into the core you were able to take them down that was clutched to make sure that this three star worked and then just the eagle heals both everything and this is how you do a queen charge hybrid so nicely done and we're getting back well to the other side because this is right now that they, they need the three star. I mean, it's, it's already like pretty unlikely, but they still want to get those three stars in because every team has a second chance in this qualifier, like this double elimination, elimination system, which means you want to end on a high to get like really, really motivated for the second match then around. So let's see if Mega Warriors with this. Wait, is, there, is it the Blizzard? No, just Yeti Blimp, Lalo with two Ice Golems. If they can make it work, would you? Kakashi Hatake from Mega Warriors has made a deep impact early on here, pulling out some enemy rocket loons from the CC of all things there. He didn't bring uh, the poison spell enough just to finish them out, but that, there it goes and knocks them out of the sky. 
super minions up top are as well uh, trying their best to defend. They didn't fully finish off that enemy Archer Queen, so that is going to be popping down those skeletons from the spell there, trying to insulate uh, his own queen against that single target Inferno. Barbarian King gets some help from the free spell as well, and that's going to be the first star claimed as the Town Hall goes crashing down, Itsu. Yeah, it's a really cool idea to just use that jump spell on getting into that tunnel compartment. There's the freeze. The queen is going strong Ooh. for now. Take down the defending queen. And now the defending warden is on the menu next. You see as well, <laughs> so far, is looking strong. The royal champion is getting place to take down the wizard tower. There is that Tesla farm, nice and early. And you can drop some loons onto that, so it shouldn't be that big of a problem, I think. All right. Keep them safe with the Eternal Tome early on. Catches an air bomb as well, and that's good news because it means it's not coming in later when they won't be under that protection. Haste spell on the loot in the top compartment gets them onto the scatter shop, but is it going to be enough to finish it off? Yes, it is! With maybe just one loon left, they finish off that scatter uh, and will keep the rest of them safe as they path along the outer edge. Ice Gull, um, or Ice Lava Hound, or rather Ice Hound, is going to go to the top compartment protecting from uh, that that air defense and we'll be able to pop and freeze everything up there but is it gonna pop at all i don't know this is such an overwhelming strike from kakashi the three star seems all but guaranteed it to yeah that was such a clean attack getting that three star in i feel like this is an entry which space station did not expect at all like those jump hero dives with the lava combination we don't see them too often they're not easy at all but just made things look easy on this one and getting that three star in that sound as you said not even popped so you can see how much of an like overwhelming three star this was and with those ice pops and the minions finishing off the last storage woody we have the first three star for mega warriors on our hands Congratulations to Kakashi and a great job there to the Mega Warriors getting the pickup that they need at a little spring in their step for the later stage of the war. Sui Lalo was the order of the day there with that Ice Hound uh, to get the damage in at the very end, uh, supporting those balloons. He had an overwhelming showing uh, to finish off the top compartment and uh, you just kind of wish that that extra firepower could have been given to his friends in the earlier stages of this war. Because as it stands, this is still going to be a big advantage for their opponents. Yeah, I feel like at this point, it, it needs a huge mess up from Space Station. And as we know them so far, like, it's not really likely that this is about to happen. So, next attack is in. We see another Ice Hound combination, this time from Nick. He is one of the best lalo attackers but at the same time he did struggle quite a bit in the pre-qualifier so let's see if he is being able to deliver when it matters being able to help his team out to secure this victory already early on in this match king and the queen take down the multi Tower, take takedown the eagle the royal champion shield actually helped those heroes down there with the seeking shield for the multi Fern tower and he's keep pushing it through is he trying to get that defending royal champion is he going to get over there? I feel like that's a bit too heavy of a push. That would be a very deep dive from this queen, and with the ability popped, it's unlikely that she'll be able to finish her off, even if she does get the uh, lock. There it is. Going to take a few pop shots off. Enemy royal champion survives the encounter, just as you predicted it, Sue. But Nick is an expert with this La Loon strike. He used La Lo in all four of his hits from the May qualifier. Uh, and managed to get a three star two times. The two times he missed, he got a 95% and a 99%. So certainly always coming close, even if not knocking it all the way down. But I have a feeling uh, that this is gonna be the three star that Space Station are looking for to back up uh, with a tic-tac-toe. The triples just keep coming from them with great timing on this Eternal Tone, protecting from the uh, Giga Bomb exploding from the town hall we've got both of those ice hounds popping now freezing all the defenses uh, and ensuring that there are just so many balloons way too many for this defensive uh setup to block at this point it's here yeah it feels like those dudes are slowly overpowering the back but at the same time the royal champion is staying alive and that uh -oh. might be a problem the ground expo is taking down the headhunters uh -oh. which that means the royal champion is staying alive for even longer can something no take way. her down? The owl is trying, the lava pups are, or like the ice hubs actually, are coming in. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, wait a second. There is a couple of defenses still left. The Arch Tower needs to go down. Can the Owl oh, the and Teslas. the Ice Pups carry this? The Tesla on the far right side. You, you say it. This is going to be super close. The minions and the Ice Pups have to join up forces to somehow overpower this back end. With the Owl, I think, would he... Yeah, I think he still might get it. Minions and Ice Pups, they may have been mortal enemies in the past, oh. but they are teamed up in the skies to wreak havoc upon this <laughs> Tesla farm in the right corner. They've just <laughs> barely done it by the skin of his teeth. Nick will finish off with the three star. Boy, that was a close one, Itsu. <laughs> It was a close one, and, and those those attacks, I feel like it's always, like I said in the beginning, it's always the coolest, just like, to watch the players, how they, like, are getting deeper and deeper into this tunnel of, like, just concentrating, like, just hoping for getting that 3-star next reaction at the end was, I think, perfect. It was really, really close, but, I mean, that's sometimes, like, if you're always 3-starring, that's skill at some point. So, really, really good job by him getting that 3-star, with this 3-star, yep, this match is sadly... Yeah, over. I see, hope for a lot of good attacks just to get like the motivation, like the mindset back for Mega Warriors. But we have now the Dragon Rider attack with the Queen Charge and a Lock Launcher. And we have seen this earlier, Woody. We have seen this earlier, this Lock Launcher, Queen Charge. And this was the one star. This was the one star, was perfectly baited by Space Station. So let's see. I, I don't want to jinx anything, but let's see if something similar is happening. And they predicted this Queen Charge again. Well, Abdullah did tell us before the match began that Space Station Gaming was the team that he looked forward to facing off against the most. He has trained a lot and has actually watched Marinals uh, for some videos uh, to get some more information about the game. He's been training and focusing, but will uh, he be able to go up against his teacher uh, and teach him a lesson? Three stars is going to be a tough uh, expectation for Abdullah, especially with the Mega Warriors being so far behind in this war uh, already. But with a deep charge from this Queen and a log launcher to roll through to that top compartment, he is going to be going a oh, long way really? earlier. Hold on. What's that? It's a the rocket loons this is like one of the deadliest clan cars right now we just saw how those rocket loons right right away went to that queen and because he used the queen ability the the, the lock launch was the next target and take a look at that the wall to the town hall did not open this is this is super bad because the town hall is supposed to go down from this queen and with this lock launch gone i don't know where the queen goes after finishing this compartment woody yeah, her pathing may be kind of up in the air at this point. Uh, I do see that Siege Workshop in the top left might draw her ire or potentially the gold storage there. We'll just have to keep an eye out. Oh, she does go for the Siege Workshop, it looks like. It goes down, though. She doesn't have to go through walls to oh. reach it. And so that means she can retarget back into the center. But oh, no, with the Town Hall heating her up, I don't know how much longer she's got it. Yeah, there's no ability left. He has one rage and one invisibility spell left, though. Another... Oh, wait! The queen is going back, and now she's going for the complete wrong wall. No! The queen! Uh, please, come. The queen has to come back. No, she's keep going for the king building, which means she's going for the wrong compartment. This might be... Oh, no. This might be another one star, depending on how the queen goes. She has 40 seconds left round about. Those dragon rides are trying to push through. But with no spells left at this point, it's not going to be either. The Queen again is going, I guess, for the wrong wall. And yep, she is. This is going to be another one star. Space Station really showing off on defense. And I think you have to give a shout out on for the base baiting team of Space Station. Doing an amazing job of baiting those locked onto charges, which are so common in the community leagues right now. Because like, like, it's re like it's really strong. But if someone is expecting this, you see what can happen with you. Rocket balloons in the clan castle preserved Agent 33's base. A one star defense yet again. And it is hard to imagine a more successful base building squad than what we have seen already from Space Station with two one star defenses against a top ranked team in the clash of clans world championship qualifier space station gaming has got a bright future if they can keep those walls held high against these incursions yeah that's right they have like so far they have done an amazing job of 
countering the meta because those power side queen charges with those dragon riders this right now is one of the most common strategies and so far it kind of like it forces then later teams to like really think twice if they want to do a charge like this against this those bases and now we have Morinal coming in he is coming in with this warden walk pekka smash four pekka six of those super wizards this is going to be a heavy heavy push right there we have the warden walk starting off strong on this right side and he right now has the blim selected which tells me that he tries to do this smash at like this five o'clock side roundabout into the core and then is trying to blimp the town at the same time the biggest threat like the biggest problem with this approach sometimes can be that those healers are switching off to the yetis which you have normally in the clan castle maybe he's bringing some sneaky goblins as well depending on that we have to take a look for those healers like those healers are going to be the main target to take a look at if they're going to switch the smash i think it's looking good if they're going to switch to whatever is inside that blimp woody then it might not look as good anymore Marinal is like the pinch hitter for this space station squad because he can go in against virtually any base. He is so versatile being able to bring in drag bat, zap ice, lalo, super witches, or as we see here, Pekka smash and do it successfully. Big high hit rate for this guy and it is showing off. Uh oh, even though he lost an ice golem there to a spring trap, he still ought to be able to drill deep in this bottom compartment, jumping into the center where the CC troops are now getting pulled on out. Pekas are taking a beating, but they do make it to the scatter shot there, knocking it apart. And as the CC troops come spreading out now, he's gonna be able to pop them down one by one and jump into another big compartment. Marinal is just on a stampede to victory, Itsu. This is looking strong. Those Pekka jumping and we have those healers switching to the Pekka, which is the key thing on this one back and ground skeleton traps are delaying things a little bit longer but with that royal gem ability still alive with that queen ability still not even used right now this is looking strong we need to see powering through red mines are coming in but there's one healer which is still trying to somehow heal those two back up the unicorn is following the warden though so we had a um, another combination of those pets which is usual and this, take a look at that, Yak just taking the lead, charging those mass barbarians spawn from the king around the base and just saying like, follow my lead, we're going to get all of those gold mines and elixir collectors out easy. Well, as you heard earlier, opponents of his uh, like to watch Marinal's videos to get a little bit of insight and uh, a strategic leg up. If you want to be able to pull off attacks like the one you just saw here right now, make sure to go check out Marinal, where he uh, will show you how it's done on his own channel. Caffeinated, as always, takes a sip of the coffee as he celebrates his three-star victory on that strike, virtually guaranteeing advancement for Space Station uh, with a perfect strike so far and two amazing defenses. It looks very likely uh, that they will be the squad that will go up against Darkest Muzan in the upper bracket. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's uh, looking way too strong for them. Like their po their performance, not only on offense but as well on defense, so far was incredible. I feel like that's the best word to describe it. Really, really powerful. Really um, good at understanding the meta and what to defend. And it was like a really good scouting of the opponent, like something which is like always underestimated coming into those tournaments because like you know what your opponent is, you know, um, and you can scout what they are doing and then trying to defend that. And it kind of feels like that they exactly did that. The new Mega Warriors really like to do those uh, queen charges, those risky approaches from the other side, and then just baited those. Because if you only take one de uh, one, one star on defense, match can be already over. And this one is now trying to get the next three star. And he is starting on the town hall side to get that town hall nice and early. Lius Yukio is attacking hard with these Dragon Riders. He's seen them successful before, and he surely knows that they can pull off a triple again. But he's got some big targets to deal with in the center of this base. Three multi-target Infernos uh, on defense within range for this Archer Queen, if she can just dig in deep enough. 
her heels are gonna be uh, dug pretty hard though against so many point defenses firing away at her. That requires the rage spells that Leos has dropped out to keep her topped off and safe. Enemy Archer Queen is gonna cause no problems at all as she continues to pierce on through, but a little bit of a slowdown now as the CC pulls out and it is a lava hound in disguise. Big slowdown effect for defenses here by Marinol, but will it be enough to repel the late stage hit here? Five Dragon Riders can deal massive damage, and I see already a couple of ground targeting expos on the backside as well. Uh, bodes well for an aerial attack by Yukio. Yeah, there are some ground expos, which means they're not like that big of a problem for Dragon Riders, obviously. Let's see, the Royal Champion and the Queen are about to get into that area of the base as well. The Royal Champion is taking down that King, which is looking good. The Warden ability really early, and there's one Loon flying in front, triggering some traps. Now it's coming down to the rest. This wall break is set a little bit too late. You want to get the Queen into the multi tower compartment. Is she still going there? Wait, that's... Okay, that's no problem whatsoever now. Queen is just following that channel, getting into the Eagle. But there's still so much more on the back end. Can those Dragon Riders push through? They're really strong. But there that one's flying. He needs to rage up his own Royal Champ to take down the defending Royal Champ. Now we have an epic face off. Royal Champion versus Royal Champion. And it almost looks like the Builder Huts are going to be the last line of defense for this base. Marinal trying all he can to hold on. But the buildings uh, are just being hammered away by these Dragon Riders repairing uh, as best they can. The Builders might be able to top them <laughs> back off. Air Skeletons on defense as well to keep them alive and i think marinal has done it defending against his countrymen the remaining brazilian uh squad mates for mega warriors have just met their match against marinal uh, and once again are going to be sent back to the drawing board yukio is just scratching his head wondering what could have gone differently there to deliver the triple that the mega warriors will surely need in the lower bracket uh, if they want to climb their way back to the top, Itsu. It's not going to be easy. We have seen already the first match, which which was impressive from both sides. And we had QSFN already with the perfect war. So it's not going to get easier at any point. Space Station so far is looking, looking really strong. Like they are going then up into the upper bracket, keep going, keep trying to stay in there. Because so far, the upper bracket was always the, the best way to approach those finals because we always had the upper bracket winner winning the entire month and winning that golden ticket. So let's see if they can do that. But obviously, that's still really far ahead in time because we have now Lexnos coming in with his favorite attack strategy, which is this Queen Charge Dragon Rider attack. He has eight loons with him, a couple of invisibility spells and five Dragon Riders for the back end. So far, he has the Blim selected. Let's see if that's good. Nope, it's not going to change because he's starting things off with that blimp for the single Inferno Tower right there. Um, I actually heard that Queen Charge Barch was his favorite attack strategy, so I don't know why oh. he's deviating to play <laughs> Dragon Riders in the competitive scene right now. Yeah, come on, Lex. Where's the Barch? <laughs> I, you know, I actually saw in the bottom left corner that uh, in order to win this war, Lexnos uh, would have to get a zero star uh, and zero... Uh, percentage. So I I think he's up to the task this time. Uh, as tough as it may seem, uh, Lexnos cruising along the outer edge seems fully focused on the task ahead of him and, and not on the greater implications for the war overall. Uh, but victory already assured for Space Station. They're really just kind of uh, trying to keep that perfect momentum going, uh, especially with QSFN also being able to put up uh, a perfect war earlier on. They won't be able to do the same, don't they, Itsu? Yeah, the... Oh, wait, I just... Wait, sorry, I was just getting distracted a little bit by this wall break. Um, I was wondering if the wall break is actually working, and Lex did time that perfect. Really nicely done, waiting for the wall break to happen. Now we see this deadly combination of defensive clan castle troops again, and we, we just see the reaction. Players really, really, like... Oh no, wait a second, that queen, the pathing oh. is not good for Lex at all. Like, he is going deeper inside the base, he needs to take down the tunnel, freezing up the tunnel now. And the eagle is activated as well. As long as this queen is getting, keep getting targeted by that eagle, things are looking good. But with a couple of freezes left, wait a second, is he not going to freeze again? Those healers are incredible low. One red bomb, and those healers are gone. But the Dragon Riders, Woody, they have started in the, this left side. 
That is an understatement to be sure. They are storming in hot and fast on this start. Lexnos knows that he needs to rely on them to get to the very end because the queen has now gone down. Eternal Tone protects them as they start to take a few shots from the Eagle Artillery, but really take a look at the back of the base and there's not a whole lot left to be worried about. Just that air defense in the top right corner and uh, with a free spell now able to drop directly on it, even a, a bit aggressive, maybe even early here, uh, he is appearing very confident about his opportunity uh, to finish this thing off strong. A knockdown of the multi with that royal champion, and this is going to be the shut and sealed case uh, that space station for, we're looking for in their very first encounter. The mega warriors have been deleted as space station crews on toward victory. It's not the triple that Lex was looking for here, unfortunately, because of time. You know, he gives us a little bit of a shrug and uh, takes a swig there. But oh, hold on, <laughs> uh, uh, it's it's going to be good enough after all. Uh, for government work, a two star in the mid 90s uh, is a strong showing and uh, hats off to Lexnos for his final blow here. Space Station Gaming advance.